I mentioned earlier purpose-driven, and then David interjected off camera intuitive confidence. And I actually like that better. I think <laughs> I can see that in you too. Where does that come from? Well, it's undeniable. You get a feeling in your stomach and it, you can't sleep. You're so electrified. You, your nervous system is just lit up and you know that you're going to make a film about this idea you've had. It's happened to me three times in my life and each time it did turn into a film. The first time I saw Peter Durkes, this famous South African political satirist, I saw him at the Sydney Opera House and he was talking about how he'd gone all over South Africa and he'd seen a million school kids educating them about HIV and AIDS. And I just put myself in their shoes, these kids that were my age at the time. And it was just like, I have to tell this story. I have to go to South Africa. I have to make a film about this person. It was undeniable. And that turned into Darling the Peter Durke story. It happened with Cup of Dreams, my second film. And again with Sierra, I mean, I'm not like exaggerating this or making this into a story for you. When I went on her website, I knew I was gonna make a movie about her. I, I didn't know what it was, I had no idea, but I just got this feeling. And believe me, I've had a lot of ideas along the way that never turned into anything. I've had a lot of scripts that weren't quite good enough to get made. But if you really get that gut feeling, you owe it to yourself to follow it. And, and as time goes on, I'm more and more tuned into that feeling rather than rationalizing it or intellectualizing it, just like, does this hit me on a gut level? Yeah, and that gives me confidence because I feel it in the pit of my stomach. And then I can convey that to other people and get them to join me on the journey and help me do it. Yeah. What about when people try to talk you out of your experience? Because for people that are, I mean, everybody's intuitive, everyone, but some people sure. have like a higher level, whether it's just from meditation or yoga or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and then there's people that kind of talk you out of your experience and say, oh no, you're just being whatever. Or I don't know if this will work. No, for sure. And look, at the end of the day, it just, it either happens or it doesn't. I mean, you know, you go into it with full confidence and people will either respond or they won't. So maybe I'm a little bit uh, fatalistic isn't the right word but you just keep making the effort, you keep trying. And if it is a good enough idea, it will get made. If it does resonate with people, it will happen. And if it doesn't, then sadly, it just, it won't happen. It'll be too hard. Um, but at the end of the day, it is all on you. When you're the like writer director, you're the one driving it for years. So you need to feel strong enough that you've got that energy, which lasts years to keep pushing it along. And if you look inside and you feel like the energy maybe isn't there, you need to ask yourself, is that a story I really want to tell? For any of your three films, was there ever a point where you almost gave up? Absolutely. My second film, Cup of Dreams, was a total nightmare. Really proud of the film. Um, super personal film. It's about New Zealanders' obsession with rugby. Uh, it's a bit like Canadians and hockey or Brazilians and soccer. It's a national obsession. When the New Zealand rugby team like loses in a World Cup, the economy takes a fall. People go into therapy, oh, right? Oh, wow. It, it is, the, the psyche of the country is connected to how this team does. Luckily, they're a really good team. But um, I was an All Black fan because I grew up in New Zealand, so I loved these guys. But I was too close to it. I actually loved rugby too much. And I started making not a very good film, right? And it just ran out of steam. The funding dried up and I was depressed. And I was like, okay, I just spent all my savings trying to make this documentary. I'm broke, in fact, I'm in debt. I got no idea what's next. And then my producer, Jonathan Green, he kind of picked me up, but he gave me some tough love. And he kind of said, look, the reason it didn't work out is because you're too close. You love this topic too much. You need some objectivity. And so then he helped me step back, realize why do I really love rugby? Oh, it's actually these personal reasons and it's about my relationship with my father. And he helped me delve deeper. And that turned it into a film that wasn't about sport. It became a film about people and relationships and home. And it connected with an audience who may have never heard of rugby, but they got it. So I would say sometimes you need a little bit of distance from your subject, right? It's good to be passionate, but if, if you are so in love with it that you can't see the woods for the trees, that's not necessarily a good thing. So sometimes you need people around you to give you objectivity and use that because it will help you and it will help you find the story you really want to tell.